Hi, this is Tim, and today we're going to go through the counters of RS Logix 500, which includes the CTU count up counter and the CTD countdown counter. For this video, we're going to use the same MicroLogix 1100 trainer that's still wired for the getting started guide. We're going to move fast through actually creating the program, downloading the program, going online, because we have videos for all those, and I'll put links to those in the description. We're going to start in RS Logix 500 with a new program, and we'll give it a name of Count. And we have a 1763 MicroLogix 1100 Series B. And we're going to add an Ethernet channel configuration, because we already have our PLC configured for 192.168.110 the subnet at 255, 255, 255. Now, if you're not understanding exactly what we're doing right there, uh, just look in the description. We have videos going through exactly how we do all that. Also, if you have one of our trainers that has an analog option, don't forget to go to your IO configuration and add that 1762 IF2 OF2. Uh, this is our basic trainer that we're working with today, so it does not have that. Now let's open up the C5 counter data table and just have a look to start with to see what bits we actually have. So we have the CU bit, which is the count up enable bit. Then we have the CD bit, which is the count down enable bit. We have the DN bit, which is the done bit. We have the OV bit, which is a count up overflow. We have the UN bit, which is a count down underflow. And then we have the UA bit, which is the update accumulator bit. And we're gonna put all of those in there to understand them a little better, with the exception of the UA bit. And the UA bit is the update accumulator, and it is only used on the high-speed counter of the fixed slick controller. And that's a really obsolete controller, so I'm gonna say that this bit's just a legacy bit. And you see it in a program, you probably need to pay attention to it. But honestly, I can't think of a time I've ever seen this bit used in a program. So we're gonna use switch one to control our counter. Uh, so we're gonna just put an XIC of I colon zero backslash four because that is what switch one is connected to. And we'll just call that switch one. And then we're gonna to go to our timer counter tab you can see we have a CTU and a CTD instruction. So we're going to select the CTU instruction and we'll assign it C5 colon zero. And we'll just call this our CTU counter. And let's put a preset of 10. Now we're going to tie the counter bits to these lights just so we can get a visual of when they're turning on. We're going to go back to our user tab and select the XIC instruction and put C5 colon zero dot CU. Again, we won't put a description in just the same as the timers. If you don't put a description in a child element, then it will take the description of its parent element. And we're gonna assign this to the green light, which is O colon zero backslash zero. And we'll just call that the green light. Now we're going to assign C5 colon 0 dot DN, which is the done bet, to O colon 0 backslash 1, which is our yellow light. And the final bit that is associated with the count up counter is C5 colon 0 backslash OV. And we're going to assign that to the red light, which is O colon zero backslash two. We'll verify all that. All right, now we're ready to download. We already have videos on how to download, so I'm not going to go through the details of it. I'll put a link in the description to those. So we're online and our processor is running and we can see right now switch one is off. So this XIC is going looking for a one. It sees a zero, so it's false. So our CTU is false. And you can see all our bits right now are zero. So we switch switch one on. Now this says go look for a one. It sees a one, so it's true. So our counter now is true. And you can see our accumulated went up to a value of one and our CU bit is now a one. Now let's switch it back off 
And you can see the CU bit is now off. The count up enable bit means that the CTU associated with that CU bit is true. So if we switch it back on, you see it comes back on. And also we increment it to a value of two. So now we'll play with that. Actually, we'll play with it another seven times to bring us up to a value of nine. Now our accumulated is nine. Our preset is 10. So we're right at this counter being at the preset value. And we're going to switch it that final time. And you see now our accumulated value is equal to our preset. So our done bit is now a one. Right, let's go ahead and switch this switch off that way we make sure we understand how this done bit works so you see our cu bit went back off but our done bit stayed on so the done bit of a count up counter means that the accumulated value is greater than or equal to the preset now if you switch it back on again you can see this counter is going to keep counting So the bit we have left is this overflow bit. And what's going to happen is if we sit here and switch this 32,767 times, we'll be able to see what it does. So what we're going to do to shortcut that, let's go change our accumulated value to 32,760. That puts us right up there near the edge of this counter. So we'll go ahead and switch it. And let's bring it up to 67, 32,767 times. So we'll switch this back off. Now this time when we switch it, you're going to see we got that overflow bit. And look what our accumulated value is now. It's a negative 32,768. And now as we switch it, you see it is counting from the lowest integer. It's still counting up, but it's at the lowest negative number and it is working its way back up. And this overflow bit here signifies that counter has gone over that edge from its maximum 32,767 to its minimum negative 32,768. And when we get in a later video, we're going to talk about dealing with overflows, but this would be where you need to handle this. So this bit right now signifies that it has counted at least 32,767. Now there's where the trick comes in is you don't know how many times this has rolled over. So let's just go back up here and let's bring this back to 32,767. So we're right back there again. We switch it. You see it goes back to 32,768. There's nothing to signify that it's done it a second time. So in a later video, we'll go through how to handle that. But for the most part, most counters are not going to need to count that high. The big takeaway is the count up enable bit means that the CTU instruction is true. The done bit means that the accumulated value is greater than or equal to the preset. But... Right now, our accumulated is much less than our preset. And that's what this overflow is doing right now, is it's signifying that it is counted past that. So if we right click this and toggle it, you see the done bit goes off. So really, it is that the accumulated value is greater than or equal to the preset, or the overflow bit is set. And then the overflow means that it has made that transition for 32,767 to a negative 32,768. All right, now let's go through the count down counter. And to do that, we're going to make just a few changes to what we have. So we're going to use our online edits and we're going to select start rung edits. And then we're going to highlight the CTU and we're going to change it to a CTD. The CTD uses a little bit different format, mainly the CU bit is not used. We're going to use the CD bit, which is the countdown enable. Then we're going to use the UN bit instead of the OV bit, which this is the underflow bit. Now we'll highlight all those rungs that we changed. We're going to hit the accept. 
test and run. All right, let's go ahead and set our accumulated value back to zero. Now we're going to switch switch one. We can see our CD bit is now a one because our CTD is true and our accumulated value went down by one. Now notice the done bit is not set. As you can see, each time that we switch the switch, it's going down by one. So how do you ever get a countdown counter done? Well, it uses the exact same evaluation. If the accumulated value is greater than or equal to the preset or the OV bit is set, then it will be a one. So we can manually go here and select, let's just change the accumulated to an 11. You see our done bit is now a one. So maybe you're wondering now, why would you ever use a CTD counter? There's a lot of good uses for it. And one of the greatest things that this is good for learning is that multiple instructions can work on the same data file. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy and paste this wrong now. So let's just control C, control V. And now we have both of these wrongs. And on this top one, let's change this back to a, a CTU counter. This is our count up counter that we just had. And now the second one, let's change our input from switch one. Let's go for our green button, which is I colon zero dot zero backslash zero. And we'll just call that our green button. And now let's accept both of these rungs test them and assemble them. And now we have both of them. Let's put our accumulated value back at zero. Let's see our done bit went off. And now let's switch switch one. And you see it works exactly the same as it did before. It's counting up each time. And now let's press button one. You see it brings it down. So what would be a purpose for this? Well, let's say this is a part counter. So each time we're going through, we're counting up. Now we have a bad part. We take that part away. That way we can keep track of good parts with the combination of the count up and count down counter. I hope this video has been helpful. Obviously the basic takeaway from this is how to count up instructions and count down instructions work. The probably more important takeaway from this is that you can take multiple instructions and manipulate the same data point. Uh, so a lot of people, you know, will have rules that will know you cannot have duplicate bits. That's against the rules. Well, no, it's not against the rules. It may be a bad practice, but it's not against the rules. And this is a perfect example of a lot of times it is the proper way to do it. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.